when I see the statue. I see a ship loaded with slaves. I see my own great-grandmother being sold away from her husband and children, never to be seen again. The monument does not glorify the Confederate cause. Rather, it humanizes the Confederate suffering. The Civil War is a burden of history that we should never forget, but never celebrate. Which way should this community be moving? Let's take that statue down. Let's put it somewhere where it's not on public land, and let's not honor a lost cause that stood for hatred, racism, and in intimidation against African people. These people wanted to put up the, the monuments to the memories of their brothers and fathers and sons before they were all gone. In August 2017, hundreds of people gathered in downtown Tampa to honor 32-year-old Heather Heyer. She was killed in Charlottesville, Virginia, after a car slammed into a group of counter-protesters at a white nationalist rally. Those right-wing groups were in Charlottesville to protest the removal of a Confederate statue from a local park. The majority of Confederate monuments were built during the Jim Crow and civil rights eras. They are seen by historians as a way to intimidate African Americans and reaffirm white supremacy. Across the country, local officials are grappling with the issue of Confederate monuments and what they've come to symbolize. This is Tampa's monument story. Tampa in the early 20th century, you know, 1900, 1920, was a rapidly growing city. It was a city that was changing in every way imaginable. There were monuments that were being dedicated across the South and across the state during that era. And so it was not unusual at all to, for Tampa to, to get its own monument. It was the United Daughters of the Confederacy that raised the money for this monument. They were the wives and daughters and sisters uh, of those soldiers. And they wanted to remember their families. The dedication of the Confederate Memorial was a, a pretty big deal. Uh, pretty much every politician in the region would have been there, uh, and some statewide politicians were there as well. State Attorney Herbert S. Phillips gave the keynote address and extolled the virtues of the Old South while praising reconciliation and the New South. In his speech, Phillips recognized the courage of the Northern armies and made a clear point about African Americans. The South stands ready to welcome all good citizens who seek to make their home within her borders. But the South detests and despises all who, in any manner, encourage social equality with an ignorant and inferior race. Well, you have to be very careful, very, very careful about applying current analysis to what was going at, at that time. It was really an anti-Northern interference point he was making. He was not making a purely racist statement. You know, 2017 is a very different time than 1911. And the motivations then are, in some ways, incomprehensible to us now, because so much has happened and so much progress has been made. But something that was done by a group of ladies to honor their families has changed meaning entirely. And, and that's kind of why we are where we are. The problem with Confederate symbols is that one man's nod to heritage is another man's reminder of oppression. County Commissioner Les Miller has been spearheading the effort to move Tampa's monument from outside the former Hillsborough County Courthouse, an annex that holds traffic court and conducts weddings. Those things were put there for, for a reason, and that was to keep us in bondage and to keep us separate. You know, when I walked past that monument when I was a student at USF, and I was going to the law library, and I look at it, and I know what it meant, I'm like, I said one day, I'm going to help bring that thing down. So the, these monuments were a very uh, important symbol of all, all that was going on to, to remind blacks that they were still inferior and that they really had uh, very few rights. I mean, they were commemorative, of course, uh, but mostly they were clear signals to the black community that this is still a white man's country. 
these were manifestations of white supremacy. They were placed there to prove to all of the African Americans in the South who was in charge now, that the biracial time of Reconstruction was over, and they were going to go back to being a secondary, a second-class citizen. So the statues really go along with a peak in lynching, a peak in segregation, uh, and it's many historians have called it the worst time to be African American in history is the 1890s. So they, it goes all together, and the statues are just part of that. Each dot on this chart represents a symbol honoring Confederates or the Confederate States of America and the year it was dedicated. This includes monuments, statues, and names of schools or other public places. There are 718 monuments, and the majority were dedicated between 1898 and 1918. Uh, even though slavery ended in 1865, racism increases in the late 19th century, and most scholars feel it reaches its peak between 1900 and 1920. That's when cradle to grave Jim Crow segregation by law is Im Im imposed the worst kind of uh, uh, byproducts of, of, of racial prejudice and ethnic prejudice reach their peak during this period, and that's when you get these statues. They were trying to reassert what they called uh, the values of the lost cause. When the one in Tampa was erected in 1911, that was the height of lynchings across the country. And so these were monuments of terror because they signaled to local communities that American terrorism against um, African Americans, against the Irish, against Catholics, against German-speaking people were um, totally acceptable. But I, I reject that and say that no, they did not have an evil motivation. They had a memorial motivation. They had a, a familial remembrance motivation. It, it should not come back to race. People that have only race on their mind will see race in everything. This is absolutely ridiculous that everything is seen through the prism of race. On June 21st, after a four to three vote, Hillsborough County commissioners rejected a proposal to move Tampa's monument. But less than a month later, Miller requested a new vote. Right now, will it stay or will it go? The Hillsborough County Commission from is a potentially heated meeting over the future of the Confederate memorial statue. Yeah, it's causing quite a bit of controversy as people on both sides of the issue are making their voices heard. This is a monument to veterans. Yes, they are veterans. Nobody's trying to take that away from anyone. <clears throat> But they were veterans who fought, fought to keep the institution of slavery. They're veterans who fought to not be a part of these United States of America. You know who else was a veteran? My dad. When my dad was being shipped off to Vietnam, he had to wait in the colored section for the bus. Seeing a monument, seeing a Confederate flag is a reminder of those are people that want to keep things the way they were. History has never been perfect. We should know that. And we cannot change the injustices of the past. Our duty as present day generation is to preserve our history, not erase it, to learn from our history and not repeat the mistakes of our history. This is not about trying to change history. We never will change history. History will be there forever. Some 50, 60 years from now, this will all be history. So I'm going to make a motion, and that motion is, I move that the Confederate Monument, Memoria and Eterna, be removed and transferred within the next 60 days, or as soon as practical thereafter, from the Hillsborough County government's property, located at the old county courthouse, 419 Pierce Street. Motion carried, 4 to 2. Commissioners Hagen and White voted no. Good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday, August 16, 2017, and welcome to your meeting of the... At the next county commissioner's meeting, the relocation hit a snag. Commissioner Victor Christ wanted private funds and not taxpayer dollars to be used to move the monument. I move that the county shall expense no public funds to dismantle the Memora and Turner from county property. Uh, seeing no further discussion, please record your votes. Motion carried, four to two. Commissioners Kemp and Miller voted no. The commissioners gave Miller and his supporters an ultimatum. 
raise half the money in 30 days, or the monument stays. You are siding with traitors and those who commit treason I'm siding and with kill America. Americans. I'm, you are against America. I'm siding with I'm America. I'm fighting for the union. You're saying that those who fight I'm against from the, the union. union. I was born and raised in the union. So why are you fighting for Confederates? Because it's our right. Why are you saying that they are the same as the ones I'm not that fight fighting for them? Confederacy. I'm con fighting for the right for this monument to stay. What does it say on right veterans? there? Veterans. The Confederate States of America. Bye, Felicia. The Confederates Bye, committed Felicia. treason. Bye, you are Felicia. fighting for traitors. Bye, you Felicia. are fighting for traitors. Shame on you. Despite rising tensions, a call to action on social media proved successful. In 24 hours, private individuals had donated over $140,000 to move the monument. I understand what your feelings are toward that monument, if you're a supporter of it, or the Confederate flag. I understand that. But you're not trying to understand what it means to me. You're not understanding the pain it caused me. The Confederate flag was flown during a war that wanted our ancestors to remain in slavery. The Confederate monuments were put on the courthouse properties throughout the South to remember the South, and as many of them said, the South will rise again. And put there, to, I think, for intimidation, if you ever had to go in the courthouse, remember, we're watching you. I still have not uh, stopped looking over my shoulder. I still go in my garage and close the door before I get out of the car. So I tell my wife to do the same thing and my kids to do the same thing. Um, I still tell my grandkids to be very, very careful uh, of where they are and watch their surroundings. In a field where his great-grandfather was laid to rest, Ken Brandon Jr. hopes to bury the debate over Tampa's Confederate monument. The Brandon Family Cemetery was intended to be a compromise that could appease everyone. It is here that county officials voted to move Tampa's Confederate monument. I just thought it was a very fitting uh, tribute to him. It isn't his monument, but I thought it fit him personally. James Brandon left Hillsborough County to fight for the Confederate Army when he was 20. He went up and fought, got captured, sent to Rock Island, Illinois. He was let out of prison and had to walk home. He came home with his feet wrapped in rags. He had been, I understand, uh, taken in by a family and was nursed back to health on the way back and then came on back. When Ken Brandon looks at the statues of the Confederate soldiers, he sees his great-grandfather, the monument itself of the two soldiers, the one going to war and the one coming back broken and dejected, fit my great-grandfather just perfectly since he was a prisoner of war, and I'm sure that's the way he came back. We, we heard from the county in a, in a roundabout way. They had three or four places they were considering to, they wanted to put the monument because they wanted to move it off the public property. And it had to go someplace, and I thought, well, maybe it would avoid conflict since they were having the conflict because it was being on public property. Brandon hopes his family cemetery will be a quiet end to a contentious debate that divided the community for months. I mean, this just needs to be ended and say, this was a part of history and it's over. Let's go on. So I hope this will satisfy people, but it doesn't matter. You can't satisfy everyone. <laughs>